A few months ago I did a video on uh, 10 little things you can do with your A-liner. Cheap little ideas. And it was quite popular, so I think it's time I did another 10. Hope you enjoy. Well, the more I traveled in the trailer, the more I noticed that things were starting to wear. I was getting wear marks, like on this counter, you can see right here. And I originally thought I did that when I was modifying the counter, but it kept getting worse and worse. And there's also one up on my wall there on the side, and there's one outside the window as well. So I had to figure out what they was coming. What it is are these knobs or spacers that are on the tops of the sides of the walls. When they come down they have these rubber or plastic spacers. And in time they wear. And when they wear, they wear on the surface that they're in contact with. But there's an easy fix to this. Go to the dollar store and you get these felt self-adhesive pads. They come in various sizes. They're usually like a six pack or a ten pack. And uh, they're self-adhesive. So you just uh, go to those posts, you stick one of these over there, and your problem solved. No more wear. So here's a little self-portrait in my mirror. Uh, another easy fix-up is uh, just a little dollar store vanity mirror, which I've got in, uh, in my window, just the right height. And uh, I put it up with double-sided tape, you know, the ones with the tabs you pull out. And amazingly, I've had this up for over a year, and it's never fallen out. So, uh, spend a few dollars, and you can see how good you look in the morning. <laughs> Another super easy five-minute fix. Adding levels to the corner of your pop-up trailer. These are Walmart levels. They cost me all of, I think, three dollars. Self-adhesive, you just put them on, and of course, when the roof is down, you see if they're level when you're setting up. A lot easier than using an actual level or anything like that. And pat them on for six weeks and they haven't fallen off. This used to be green, it's clear, but I don't care as long as the bubble's there. So here's how I make pizza on my A-liner when I don't have a toaster or an oven. I've got five inch mini pizzas. I do have two pizza stones. Uh, I made these out of ceramic floor tiles. They're about three eighths thick. And uh, there's two of them about five and a half inch diameter. I've got a stainless steel bowl, which I paid all of about a dollar fifty for. And I put a hole in that and I put a knob from a dresser on it just so I can hold it. And that's about it. First thing I'll do is light the burner. And I don't, you don't need much, just a little bit. Put the stones on. Pizza on. Cover it. It's now 10:58. Let's see how that does in 10 minutes. Okay, the time's up. Let's see what we've got. Well, let's. Not too bad. It sticks a little bit. And it's just a, there's a little burning on one side. But it's not too bad. I think if I'd actually used cornmeal on that, it would be pretty good. But anyway, there's my pizza. Here's another real quick and easy tip. Back bumper. If you've got a hollow one and you've got one of these pull out plugs, then you can use it, if I can get it, to store firewood. Keeps it dry, don't worry about it getting banged around. Uh, other people put tarps and stuff like that, but for me it works for firewood and these plugs are pretty cheap. It has a bit of high priority, but one thing I wanted to do inside my trailer is to put some pictures up. And I originally tried putting some pictures on this wall with self-adhesive tape, but between the cold and the heat and it being down while I'm traveling, it always fell off. Never lasted more than like a few hours. So this time I've got some Command 
pegs. They're self-adhesive pegs. They're about that thick. And they're about the thick, same thickness as the frame, so they shouldn't interfere when it actually folds down. Anyway, I'm going to try these out, see if it works. If it does, then it'll probably be in a video. Amazingly, they did stay up. And along with photos, they can also be used for memos, maps, brochures, and receipts. This is a noodle. You might have seen this on my cold camping video where I used foam to keep the cold out. So there's another use for the foam I hadn't really thought of, and that's dust. Uh, originally I, I used the foam insulation for, uh, for keeping the trailer warm, but when you're in the desert and it's a lot of dust and wind, then it also keeps out the dust. So hot or cold, use foam. Once you listen to this storm in Utah, you'll see what I mean. One thing that I use an awful lot of are bungee cords, because I bungee cord everything while I'm traveling. The problem is these little rubber tips. They always fall off and they leave you with these jagged edges like this one here. It's an easy solution for that and it can also amuse yourself in those off hours. This one's pretty simple. All you do is get a little five minute epoxy, mix it in a little piece of plastic with a toothpick. Once you've finally got that mixed, you take the toothpick and you apply the glue on the end of the hooks, trying, if you can, to get the glue on both hooks at the same time. Now this is where the actual challenge starts because the glue will just drip off. So you need to twirl and balance for five minutes to uh, make sure that it hardens in the right spot. Great amusement for the kids. But the end result, you get a perfect smooth end that won't mar or scratch any surface. Here's the original latch in the top part of the door. Now one thing I've had problems with was actually just making it work. There. You really have to pull on it to get it over there, get it off, it's just as bad and noisy. And this handle tends to stick out if you forget to push it down, which sometimes it won't go anyway. Uh, it leaves a mark on the side of your, uh, your trailer. And the final thing is that where it is situated on the door is not the ideal point. Because if you go up here and you look, it's right here is the biggest gap. That's where you need a latch. So here's the problem and here is my solution. And what I've got here is a two and a half inch hasp which I just cut the end off so that I could rivet it with these two rivets right into the door. And this part I've bent a little bit so that it conforms with the the molding on the door frame. I've got an eye bolt here going through the door frame and it's got a lock nut on the other side and I just bent this a little bit just so it would fit properly. And the way this works, I just take this, hold it over, lock it in place and there you go. And as you can see there's a really good seal all up and down there. You shouldn't have any problems with drafts. So the last thing on my list is this thermostat. Uh, I've never liked it and I'll tell you why. First of all, it's location. Uh, when I need a thermostat, it's typically late at night, I'm cold, I'm in bed, and I need to turn up the heat. I can't see it, I can't reach it, I gotta get out of my sleeping bag. That's okay in the summertime, but in the middle of winter, that's a bit of a hassle. I did install this little cheater bar here, which I could uh, just pull, push and pull the thermostat, but that wasn't very accurate and it really was a Band-Aid solution. The second thing I don't like about it is its range goes from 50 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll never use the 90, but the 50 isn't very low. What I need, especially in winter camping, is something that's just above freezing, 32 degrees. Uh, that way I can keep the inside of the trailer from freezing when I'm out. Having only 50 means I waste a lot of propane at the minimum set, uh, setting. So here's my solution. So just to the side of my uh, stove, I have installed this 
ther cold temperature thermostat. Let me just turn it on. There we go. And it shows that it's 9.5 Celsius, which isn't that cold. However, when at light night it gets a lot colder, so I have set it to 1.8, and it's very easy to change these controls just by pressing the buttons. But let's see how that does at night. Hey, it's 1.6, 1.7, 1 there. It just shut off at 1.8. Well, it works perfect for freeze protection and it'll work for regular temperatures as well. I'd like to show a little bit more on how to build it, but I'm kind of out of time, so I'll leave that to another video. I'd like to hear your feedback. Uh, if there's something uh, you wanted me to, uh, to talk about in the A-liner or boondocking or uh, modifying things, uh, just drop me a line. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy the sunset. Happy camping! <laughs>